Grace and peace to you from God the Father and Christ Jesus, his Son. Welcome to worship with Norwood First Presbyterian Church. Whether you are a long time member or you are a new friend listening on the internet, or if you are listening by telephone, I am glad to be worshiping with you today. Every two years, the Presbyterian Church has a national gathering called the General Assembly. And this General Assembly is made up of commissioners from every presbytery. They make decisions and set policies for the church as a whole. That General Assembly for 2020 has now begun virtually. And I ask you to keep those commissioners in prayer as they try to do the essential business of the church, even though they can't gather. I have challenged the congregation to enter into a time of listening and learning about the experiences of our black brothers and sisters in this country. And to begin that, I have challenged everyone to watch the movie Just Mercy. So I am reminding you of that and encouraging you to watch that. It can be um, seen for free during the month of June on a lot of digital platforms. If you did not receive my letter about this season of listening and learning, but you would like to know the resources that we are going to be um, exploring, uh, please let the church office know. Your session will meet on Thursday afternoon to discuss plans for worship moving forward. So stay tuned. And now to share some concerns, um, please continue to keep Kay in prayer as well as her sister Faye and all of their family. Don is in ICU in Albemarle with um, lung inflammation and other complications and he is very sick. So um, please keep him in prayer. And Charles has tested positive for the COVID-19 virus, and um, he is symptomatic, so he is, um, he is sick. As a nurse in the prison system, Charles walked toward the danger in order to help those who needed care. Most of us are not in that situation. And so I urge you to follow the guidelines that are provided by the health department for ways that we can help to protect our neighbors and those who are most, most vulnerable. More and more studies are coming out that show that social distancing and wearing masks and washing hands really do make a difference. Um, we can help to reduce um, both the sickness and the death. And um, as followers of Christ, I hope that we will show our love of neighbor by following these guidelines. Finally, I don't say this every week, but I always feel it. I am so very grateful for all of you who have participated in these worship services. I want to especially thank Lucy and Sonny and Charles and David, who have provided a library of music that can be used. And today, the scripture is being read by the Bowers family. Now, let us do what we have come to do. I invite you to quiet your minds and to become aware of God who is already present with us as we prepare to worship God.
we gather to worship the living God who calls us into community and calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. We gather to worship the living God who gives us each gifts to be used for the common good. Scripture tells us there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, and each has a role to play. Let us worship our gift-giving God. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace, and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. We pray for your Holy Spirit to work among us now, to inspire our praise, to challenge us with your truth, and to equip us to use the gifts you give for service in your world. Amen. it is easy to get lost even when we are not going as many places. The Hebrew word for repent means to turn around. When we turn our hearts and minds around, God is there waiting with openness to show us the way. Trusting in the mercy that awaits us, let us confess our sins. Let us pray. God of all creation, you have made us in your image and call us to love our neighbor. We want to love as you love, yet we find it easy to turn away from our neighbors, to stand apart from those who are not like us. The burden of loving one another is too heavy for us. We pray you will heal our brokenness, renew our spirit, and open our hearts through your love. Let us continue with silent prayers of confession. Hear the good news. As people born of water and the spirit, we have died to the, new life, to the old life and the new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us every moment of our lives. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Okay, boys and girls, come closer and let's chat for a minute. Well, today's Father's Day, and you all have some great dads, so I hope you've got something special planned for your fathers. We have a special tribute to them after the benediction, so you'll have to stay tuned. I ask your moms to ask you what your dads do as a job, and this is what you told them. I found out that one works at a plant and one works for the state. One is a dumpster man and another builds stuff. And one is a farmer and a teacher of farmers. Your dads do lots and lots of different jobs, but all of them are important. Just think what would happen if no one grew food or if no one checked to see if bridges were safe, or if nobody emptied the dumpsters and there was trash all over the streets. Everybody's job, your dad's and everybody else's jobs, are different, but they're all important. In our scripture today, in our Bible lesson today, the Apostle Paul talks about the community, or the church, as a body. So our body, we have eyes and ears and nose and mouth and hands and feet. So we've got lots of different parts of our body, but we're all one body and we all need all of the different parts. Paul says, just think if the whole body was an eye, how would we hear? And if the whole body was an ear, how would we smell? We need all of the parts doing their different jobs to make a whole. So I learned last week that a lot of you watch Daniel Tiger on TV in the evenings. And Daniel Tiger has a song that kind of fits in with this. And it says, "Every I'm not going to sing it, but I'll read you the words. Everyone's job is important. We all help in different ways. I'm in charge of turning off the lights because we don't need them when we go to bed. I set the table at dinner. Dad cooks veggies and mom bakes bread. Everyone's job is important. We all help in different ways. So the Bible teaches us that not only do we all have different jobs, but that God has given each one of us, you and me and everybody who's listening, different abilities and talents. And we're to use our talents and our abilities to help the larger community and to help the church. So I wonder what talents and abilities God has given each of you. I wonder how you will use them to help others. You are important. You're an important part of our community and we need everyone to help to build a great neighborhood. You might want to hold hands with your family and let's join now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Boys and girls, I hope that you will now help Pastor David sing our prayer for illumination. This is what he's going to sing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. A reading from 1 Corinthians 12, beginning with verse 13. Christ is like a single body, which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it is made up of different parts. In the same way, all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slaves or free, have been baptized into the one body by the same Spirit, and we have all been given the one Spirit to drink. For the body itself is not made up of only one part, but of many parts. And if what were to say, because I am not a hand, I belong to the body, that I would not keep it from being a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not keep it from being part of the body. If the whole body were just an eye, how could it hear? And if it were only an ear, how could it smell? As it is, however, God put every different part in the body just as he wanted it to be. There would not be a body if it were all only one part. As it is, there are many parts but one body. So then the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Nor can the head say to the feet, well, I don't need you. On the contrary, we cannot do without the parts of the body that seem to be weaker. And those parts that we think aren't worthy very much are the ones which we treat with greater care. While the parts of the body which don't look very nice are treated with special modesty, which the more beautiful parts do not need. God has put the body together in such a way as to give greater honor to those parts that need it. And so there is no division in the body, but all its different parts have the same concern for one another. If one part of the body suffers, all, all the, the other, other parts, parts suffer, suffer with it. it. If one part is praised, all, all the, the other, other parts, parts share its happiness. happiness. All of you are Christ's body, and each one is a part of it. Today we continue our short sermon series on the theology of Mr. Rogers with particular focus on how his messages speak to what it means to be a neighbor and to live in community. Last week, we looked at something that we share with every other person, and that is our sacred worth that is ours by virtue of being created in the image of God. And today we'll look at our differences. Mr. Rogers used to say, not not only I like you just the way you are, but no one else in the whole world is like you. So I mentioned that for two and a half decades and some 895 episodes, Mr. Rogers used public television as a platform for his ministry. What I didn't say and what I didn't fully appreciate is that Mr. Rogers' ministry continues. I mentioned Daniel Tiger in my uh, word with the children today. Daniel Tiger is a PBS uh, show that comes on in the evenings and it is a production of the Fred Rogers Studios. And in fact, Daniel Tiger is the son of Daniel Striped Tiger from Mr. Rogers' Land of Make-Believe. As it turns out, all of the characters in, or almost all of the characters in Mr. Rogers' Land of Make-Believe have gotten married and have children, and they're all showing up on TV still. The song that I quoted from Daniel Tiger hit a poignant tone for me in the midst of this time of pandemic. Everyone's job is important. We all help in different ways. We have certainly become painfully aware of essential jobs that we either didn't know existed or overlooked. I remember seeing a news article about three workers who were in the materials management department of a New York hospital. All three died of the COVID-19 virus after handing out personal protection equipment to doctors and nurses. 
I never thought of jobs like that or the risks that would go along with such a job. How about you? As I try to find slivers of good that are coming out of this terrible pandemic, perhaps this is one, that we have been given the opportunity to see people we so often overlook in our normal fascination with the rich and famous and powerful. We have seen the store clerk, the person who disinfects hospitals and stores, the postal worker or delivery person, not just nurses, but also aides in nursing homes and prisons, those who work in meat packing plants and so many others we have come to realize just how essential their work is. That our communities, our neighborhoods can't function without them. And perhaps we are also becoming more aware that so many of these essential workers do not make a living wage or have health care benefits or have the job security that allows them to demand greater protections as they go about their essential work. In the passage that the Bowers read from 1 Corinthians, Paul is using the analogy of the body to speak of the church, the body of Christ. Parts of 1 Corinthians 12 are always read when we ordain and install officers in the church, reminding us that we each have unique functions, but all of us are needed in order to truly be the body. In that we live out our discipleship in the world, I believe it is fair to think of this body analogy and how it works as we live in community in the world as well as in the church. The body analogy was not unique to Paul. Rome used it as well to support the social hierarchies. In Rome, the analogy went like this. Everybody needs a head to make decisions and to be the boss. And so the head was provided by the wealthy, the rulers, and the elite. But likewise, everybody needs hands and feet to do the dirty work, and that was everyone else. In other words, the lesser or unfortunate serve the strong. Paul draws the same picture, but points in a different direction. All parts work differently, but all parts are important and needed and necessary. The end result of Paul's picture is that amid the diversity in the body, there is a deep unity in which all have the same care for one another. If one suffers, all suffers, all suffer. If one rejoices, all rejoice, because all the parts belong to one another. In Paul's picture, the weak, that is, those of a lesser social or economic status, are not abused. In fact, because we all belong to one another, the weak parts are treated with special care. Now, if you cringe a bit at the use of calling some weak, Keep in mind that Paul turns our notions of weakness upside down. Paul speaks of God's power working in that which the world considers weakness, like a man hanging on a cross. Therefore, the socially and economic weak can't be despised or marginalized, for it is in and through weakness 
that God's power often shows up. In this passage, Paul is calling us to a better way of life together. Yes, in the church, but I'd say in our neighborhoods, to use Mr. Rogers' picture. In one episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Queen Sarah and Mary, Mayor Maggie decide to change jobs for the day. When Queen Sarah arrives at Westwood to assume the role of mayor, she finds that the mayor's duties for that day include 12 meetings, four signings, and two speeches on the radio, no less. Queen Sarah is overwhelmed and gets very nervous about needing to give a speech. When Queen Maggie arrives at the castle to assume the responsibility as queen, she finds that a big uh, event is planned and it is up to her to make many decisions, decisions about the guest list and the schedule and the menu and what dishes will be used. And she also becomes overwhelmed because this has nothing to do with her interests or her talent. Queen Sarah and Mayor Maggie end their adventure of switching jobs very quickly, in less than a half a day. And Mr. Rogers explains, they like doing the job that is theirs to do. That certainly fits well in with our passage from Corinthians, but I would say that there is another message in this for in this exchange, they also learned a lot about the life of each other. And they learned to appreciate what the other's life was like and said as much. When I consider the number of essential workers who do not make a living wage or have health care, when I think of workers in meatpacking plants who have no option but to work in unsafe conditions and who are faced with the choice of going to work sick or losing their jobs, I know that we are called to a better way of living together. Somehow, we must take special care of those who find themselves on the margins of society. Perhaps the first step is for us to educate ourselves about the work and lives of those upon whose work we depend. This pandemic has revealed how important that is and how little really most of us know of how the others work. We don't have to trade places for a day like Queen Sarah and Mayor Maggie. We can read, we can ask. Sometimes all we need to do is open our eyes to what is right in front of us. And we need to pray that God will guide us in how we can both show our gratitude to those who do often thankless work, but also advocate for changes that will make our neighborhoods, our community, more like the kingdom of God as it is in heaven. In an interview that Mr. Rogers gave after 9-11, he said this, No matter what your particular job, we are called to be repairers of creation, to bring joy, light, a faith, and love to your neighbor and yourself. 
This pandemic has revealed the great need for each of us to be repairers of creation, to be repairers of our neighborhoods, of our society. I am convinced that God has given us all the gifts we need to create the kind of community, the kind of neighborhood in which everyone is cared for and treated with respect. Now, I don't know exactly how to do that. And I know that we will never perfectly achieve God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, at least not on this side of heaven. And I know that we will make mistakes. But that has never stopped the people of God. It is our call as followers of Christ. Now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Friends, we are called to a life of discipleship, serving one another in Christ's name. And one of the ways that we live out our discipleship is by supporting the mission and ministry of the church. By God's grace, your gifts to the church feed the hungry in body and spirit. Please give generously as you are able. one in the spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord and we pray that our unity may one day be restored and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, maker of the far-flung planets and the earth beneath our feet, we praise you. Thank you for this long spring of pleasant temperatures we have enjoyed, for rainy, cloudy days that make sunny days even more delightful and for all the signs of creation's thriving during this time when we are staying at home more. Especially we thank you for Jesus Christ, who upended our expectations 
and revealed your loving, gracious power in his weakness on the cross, in acts of love, and in a life of service to others. Teach us to be imitators of Christ, using the gifts you give for the common good. Today, we give you thanks for fathers and for men who have been like fathers to us, for the lessons they have taught us, for the love they have shown us, for the encouragement they have given us, for the faith they have imparted to us. We give you thanks. For those who cannot celebrate Father's Day because the pain of loss is too great, or the relationship with their father was not life-giving, or because they never knew their father or grieve that they themselves are not fathers. We ask for your healing and comfort. Pour out your Holy Spirit far and wide as the General Assembly of the PCUSA meets, scattered in homes across the nation and world, Guide their decisions in ways that will strengthen our collective witness to Jesus Christ. You know our needs before we speak them, O God, and you know how great the need is in our nation and world. We pray for justice to roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream in the streets of our nation. For those whose losses are too many to name and too heavy to continue to carry, give them your easy yoke and lighten their burden. For police officers who seek to protect all people and are called to make split-second decisions, we pray for wisdom, protection, support, and a deep respect for the grave responsibility with which they are entrusted. As the number of cases and deaths from COVID-19 continue to rise, we pray for the success of scientists working on treatments and vaccines, and we pray for protection and strength for all health care and support workers. Heal the sick, O oh God, we remember, especially in prayer, Charles and Don. Here are prayers for those we love, those we are called to love, those we find difficult to love. Grant us your spirit of strength and wisdom so that we can live the commandment we know, the greatest commandment to love you with all we have, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor
say I 